guys, and welcome back to another Super Mario 64 Challenge video here on Tetra Bay Gaming, where we take on the N64 Classic in various unconventional and often painful ways. And it's been a fun run, but I think I've done every challenge I've wanted to with this game. So buddy, I guess it's time to put you back on the shelf for a bit. Oh, fuck! Alright, I guess it's finally time. Time for probably the most requested challenge video on my channel. Time now to take on Super Mario 64 with the DK Bongo controllers. The rules are simple. I have to grab at least the minimum 70 stars required to normally beat the game, and I'm constrained to using these bad boys. And yeah, even before attempting this challenge, I had determined that two sets of bongos are needed. So, without further delay, let's get slapping. In three, two, one. Alright, we got Peach's letter, the intro cutscene, Mario jumping out of the pipe, same old song and dance. That is until we get to control Mario here. So before we start our adventure, let's quickly break down the control setup for this challenge. So for the left set of bongos, the bottom left and right halves will be for moving left and right respectively, and similarly, the top halves will be for forward and backward movements. Then, on the right set of bongos, left bottom is B, right bottom is the A button, Z is set to the top left bongo, top right is set to C up, and finally the side button on the right bongo is set up to be the start button. And for those wondering, before I get flooded with comments asking, the software I was using to map these controls was not detecting any sort of input for clapping at the bongos, so that won't be used in any way for this challenge. Not that I think I'll need it. Anyways, after talking shop with Lakitu, it's time to enter the cast- uh, let's try that again. Time to enter the castle and jump into the first stage in this adventure, bob -omb Battlefield. After spending some time to get familiar with the controls here, you guys know I usually like to get the star behind the chain chomp first, and here is no exception. Surprisingly, I was able to jump on the post pretty quickly and do this on my first try. I usually can't even get it on my first try with a normal controller, so I'll take this first star as a double win. My next challenge, not really star related, but I wanted to see if I could jump kick my way up this mountain like I normally do. It took a few tries to line myself up, and a few more tries to avoid the balls, but eventually like a true gamer, I managed to pull it off. King bob -omb was surprisingly challenging, mostly due to it being pretty tough to run around him with this setup, and equally as tough to avoid his grab. That said though, three throws later and that's another star down. The race with Koopa the Quick is next, and at this point I was starting to get the hang of things. I certainly didn't win the race as quickly as I normally do, but a win's a win. Next, blasting up to the floating island was... sorta easy? It was just a bit tough to aim, since just tapping the bongo for a split second made the reticle move seemingly too far every single time. But one blast later, and that is star number 4. And with that being all I really wanted to get from B.O.B., for now at least, let's waltz into Womp's Fortress next. Here first, I wanted to grab the star on the side of the fortress. This was another star that was surprisingly a bit more difficult to get, since the camera was fixed at an awkward angle, when while kicking where I usually do, Mario would get sent flying in the opposite direction. Fortunately, the solution was rather simple. I just had to wall jump up from the opposite side, which still wasn't super easy, and even after I made it up, I was a big dumb and fell off. Nice. Eventually though, I did get it. Then, after the long trek up to the top of the fortress, the fight with King Womp was on. Thankfully for this fight, you don't really have to focus on moving around, so I just had to jump and ground pound, and three hits later, we got another star. Climbing the tower at the top wasn't all that bad, nor was getting the star stuck in the wall, though I did overshoot it once or twice. But hey, that's another two stars down. Now, I could have just grabbed onto Hoot and gotten the star in the cage with relative ease, but nah, that's not painful enough, so let's try to get the star Owlis. Getting up to the island was hard enough, but then came the real challenge. I tried and tried, jumping up and wall kicking, but to no avail. Whatever I did, the attempt never felt like a good or close one. Whether it was a bad angle, lack of skill, or both, after like 20 minutes of being super close to tearing my hair out, I decided to wave the white flag and surrender, at least for now. After that crushing loss, I thought I'd cry out my sorrows in Jolly Roger Bay. This is also our first time swimming in this challenge, and it's not... bad? Getting around isn't that challenging, but more precise movement certainly was, and this was apparent inside the sunken ship when touching the chests, as well as jumping up to get the resultant star. But nothing this epic gamer can't handle. 
After getting the star for touching the chest in the cave, time once again to do some cannon blasting. This was actually the most difficult cannon shot so far. I definitely had my fair share of misses on this one. And that was only the first part. Then I had to awkwardly angle my jump to get up to the actual platform. Was not a great time. Then I jabated the star off the Unagi's tail here, and then after some work, I even managed to perfect swim my way into the star in the jet stream for another two stars. Feeling all jollied up from the bay, I went for another swim in the castle's secret aquarium for another quick star there. The beam of light is now shining down in the foyer, so let's glance up to go to the Tower of the Wing Cap. Now I have no interest in hurting myself to get all 8 red coins here, so let's just snipe the switch and be on our merry way. Next, we're slipping into Snowman's Land. The slide star was of course first, and although it was tough to control with the bongos, it was surprisingly pretty fun. Then, after experiencing what the baby penguin goes through every time I drop her off the edge a few times, I delivered her to her mama with extra style points to boot on the way there. Now time to race this thick boy! Now the last trip down the slide, I was able to slow down and control my speed, but of course here this wasn't the case. I was super close to falling off several times, and I was really worried I'd lose the race. But somehow, just barely, I was able to squeak out a win. Take that, you big spoon. Bruh. Then after barely making it down to this section here, wall kicks surprisingly worked. Pretty easily, so let's chalk this one up as well. I'm getting tired of the snow, so let's go warm up in Peach's secret slide. The first trip down the slide was rather enjoyable, but unfortunately I was just a mere fraction of a second away from getting the bonus star, so I had to get the regular star this time. The second time around though, on the flip side, I was just a mere fraction of a second under the time required. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be, I guess. Now at 20 stars, even though we have way more than the 8 we need to go up to the first Bowser stage, let's first head back to the courtyard and bongo 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 into Big Boo's haunt. I slapped around the 5 Boos around the mansion, as well as their thick leader for a star there, then did the same in the basement merry-go-round for another, and then carefully jumped and kicked my way across this gap for a total of 3 more stars. Next, although I usually dread this star, let's go pay the big boo on the balcony a visit. The fight was no big deal as always, but it's always getting the resulting star on the roof that mucks me up. Surprisingly, I only fell once though, which sucked, yeah, but all bongos considered, I'll take it. Alright, now with a whopping 24 stars in hand, let's slap open this star door here and drop down to the first Bowser stage. Right off the bat, thankfully the default camera angle lets me move exclusively left and right for the first part anyway, so nothing to write home about there, and really this entire stage was pretty quick and easy overall. Now time for the first Bowser battle. Now I was honestly really concerned if I was going to be able to beat this or not. Just like King bob it was kind of tricky getting around Bowser with the bongos, but after grabbing his tail, it was time to learn how to spin the fella. After processing in my brain which button sequence I had to go with, I started spinning Bowser around, but unfortunately since I couldn't move the camera, I had no idea where the bombs were that I had to aim for. So I just had to take a chance and wow, there you go. Blindly got that throw and mamma mia papa pia, Bowser 1 is down and the first key is ours. Zipping down, it's time to unlock the basement segment. The wascally wabbit is on the loose, so let's go nab him. I missed a few times and then accidentally rolled out into the wall here, so I guess we're slapping into Shifting Sandland now. I awkwardly made my way up this pillar to swipe the star from Klepto, jump kicked my way up the pyramid here for another, and then made my way up to the made my way made my way up to the pyramid for the star there. All right, Mips, time for round two. And there we go. Now give me the damn star. Now let's leap into Lethal Lava Land. You know, at this point, I guess I was starting to get the hang of slapping these bongos around. I was able to skip over this cage here for the star there, grabbed all 8 red coins easily, the bully fights were super annoying and painful as usual, but doable, and yeah, basically all the stars in this stage were rather easy. The ones in the volcano were a bit tough to navigate through without getting burnt to a crisp, but that's one there, and after getting a game over, there's another one here to bring the star count up to a spicy 34. After bullying the toad here for a freebie star, let's hop into Hazy Maze Cave. I clipped down to the cavern with Dory for the star there, 
I watched out for rolling rocks and wall kicked my way up to the star here. And then since I didn't want to bother with the hazy maze, I next wanted to try the wall kick on this wall here to skip up to the star there. This was another pretty tough task with these bongos. I tried and tried for so long to find a good angle, and I was just being slightly off every single time, and it would lead to a missed attempt. Then, finally, I somehow got lucky enough to land up top, and then after sweating a bit, I pulled off a saucy long jump and finally got the star up there. Lastly here, even though I didn't go unlock the metal cap, I pulled off the speedrun strat I learned not too long ago and opened the door here without it. All you gotta do is double jump kick off the wall and then hold back, and click click, the door cracks open. Then I was feeling like a mad lad, so I did some risky long jumps across the room here to nab the star at the end. After opening up the next star door, let's dive into Dire Dire Docks. Not too much to say about most of the stars I got in this course. I scooped up the star on the ship here, I did some perfect swimming once again to get the star in the jet stream like I did in Jolly Roger Bay, that was pretty tough. And then I swam up to the chest here to get yet another star. Now I don't know why I thought it was a good idea, but I decided to swim through the manta ray rings down here too. These are always a pain to swim through in these challenges, and here was no exception. Like I said earlier in the video, more precise movement when swimming is quite tough, and you basically need that to make these quick turns sometimes when swimming through these rings. Now I was struggling, but finally I decided I just need to wait in an area for the manta ray to lay down rings that were mostly lined up. And then the rings all did line up, more or less, and just like that, star 43 is ours. That's enough of the docks for one challenge, so time for the fire sea. This trek was a bit more difficult than the first Bowser stage, but still, overall, I was able to hold my own pretty well all the way up. Couple hops here, couple there, and just like that, down the big green pipe thing we go down to Bowser 2. Unfortunately, this fight didn't go as smoothly as the first one, as first off, it was much more difficult to grab Bowser's tail, as he kept freaking teleporting around, so I had to call him names so he'd chase me down for a bit first. This time, even though I could see where I had to aim, I struggled to throw Bowser into the bomb. But after several more throws, bada bing, bada boom, Bowser 2 just met his doom. Now with the second key in our possession, let's head on upstairs to the second floor. And after getting another freebie Toad Star, let's waddle down to Wet Dry World. First off, the shocking arrow lift star, which is normally incredibly easy, was actually kicking my butt this time. The Kuramame here just kept spitting absolute fire at me, making me fall off several times. Yeah, definitely wasn't my own fault sometimes. Eventually though, I did get it, and then the star at the top of the town wasn't too bad, nor was the express elevator star to my surprise. Next up, we're skipping into Snowman's Land. Getting the star in the ice block thing was easy peasy, then I fandangled my way up to the top of the snowman's head without having to deal with crossing the bridge there. Then I skipped up to the area here for the star in the box, and after quickly dispatching the chill bully, I returned there once again to get the green shell to quickly grab all 8 red coins in the course for yet another star. Tiny Huge Island is next, and at this point I was feeling like I've pretty much mastered the movement with the bongos. I easily grabbed the star on the top of the huge island, then eradicated the piranha infestation there, touched all secret spots, and finally bopped Wiggler for a total of four more stars. Climbing up the tiny version of the mountain here was pretty frustrating, but other than that, we chillin'. Now off to trek up Tall Tall Mountain, often the most frustrating course in these challenges. But I've learned a few speedrun tricks since the last challenge, so let's see if those can help us out here. I was able to clip into the mountain on my first try surprisingly, again something I can't easily do with a normal controller yet. Even after getting inside though, the next hurdle was to try and slightly move the camera enough that it would clip through the wall, all while not falling off of the stage. But after clipping up, I then used the fly guy to float down to the lone mushroom for another quick start. Then after barely floating to this section, I used yet another speedrun strat to quickly jump kick up the mountain here. I then jumped from this area to first get the star behind the waterfall. Oh yeah, I guess I haven't mentioned it yet, but controlling the game with these bongos was really putting a strain on my wrists, and I was definitely starting to feel it at this point. Just some of these hand positions were so awkward that, yeah, it wasn't pleasant. I had to like smack my wrists around just to ease the pain. The things I do for YouTube content. 
That said, after climbing up to get the star near the top, time to do it all again. Have I ever mentioned how repetitive this stage is? Then finally, I guess one of the easier stars here, I did a little jump kick here to skip having to climb up the mountain again, as well as I skipped the entire slide segment for yet another star. Alright, we're at 61 stars, nice! Only 9 more to go. So, let's head on up to the third floor... Uh, just kidding, I have some unsettled beef to settle. Alright, Owlis Jump, let's try this again. Okay, attempt 1. Nope. Attempt 2. Wow, uh, okay, we take those. Oh yeah, before we move along, quick shameless plug, if you're interested in watching me attempt these challenges live, be sure to follow me over on Twitch where I occasionally do this. Link will be down in the description below, and I hope to see you in the next one. Okay, now let's TikTok into TikTok Clock. Whereas the Bowser stage's default cameras were great for moving around, just left and right, here the camera angle made maneuvering around pretty much, uh, suboptimal at best. But, a few hops to get this star here, the one here, and a little wall kick to skip up here for another star. While those weren't terrible, getting the 8 red coins was rather tough. I kept just messing up jumps or bonking down back to the bottom. It was pretty frustrating. But after persevering, that gets us star number 66. Then the star in the cage here is next, and finally I decided to further challenge myself and my wrists with these bongos by climbing all the way up to the thwomp at the top. The jumps were pretty scary, I'm not gonna lie. The wrists were aching, but eventually I made my way up, rode the thwomp, and jumped my way up to the star here. Guess you could say I was getting pretty sweaty at this point. Then, after getting the last freebie Toad Star here, we are up to 69 stars, which is pretty epic, right gamers? <laughs> if you've seen these videos, you know I dread Rainbow Ride, and although I could get another star to skip it entirely, I like getting at least one star from each course, so thankfully that one star is all we need. And oh yeah, sorry, of course, as per tradition, with 69 stars under our belt, time to head up to the Endless Stairs and attempt a BLJ or Packwards Long Jump. I took a few seconds to analyze what I had to do, and then hold up. Okay. <laughs> wow, that's got to be one of the quickest BLJ completions I think I've ever gotten in these challenges. Riding that high, I ran to Rainbow Ride, I jumped my way up to the Tricky Triangles, and in mere moments, Star 70 was ours, and as such, Time to finally make our way up to the final stage. As per the other Bowser stages, this one too wasn't all that hard. There have been many stars along the way that have been much more difficult to get using these bongos. But hey, I'm certainly not complaining, and neither are my wrists. Last section's here, let's run past the Goombas here, and yes, time to hop into the pipe for the final battle. The first two throws with Bowser weren't anything crazy, just basically had to use my same tactic of trolling Bowser into chasing me closer to a bomb to grab and throw him, but now on to the third and most difficult throw. My other Bowser throws thus far haven't been very long, so I was starting to worry if I could even manage to throw Bowser as far as I needed to here. Several attempted throws were okay, but yeah, I just didn't have enough distance. So I had to really make a point and take the time to build up enough speed and not pause too long to switch bongo sets to press the throw button, and this was pretty tough to do. Then, after building up a large amount of speed, one more throw, and yes, there we go guys, Bowser has bitten the dust and the Jumbo Star is ours. So yes, I'm pleased to say that for those with sturdy enough wrists, Super Mario 64 is indeed beatable with a pair of DK bongo sets. As usual, this wasn't the most enjoyable, and certainly not the most ergonomic way to complete the game, but it's something I've wanted to challenge myself with for a long time, as have many of you, so I'm really happy that I was able to complete it. And with that wraps up this challenge video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop a like down below, and also check out some of my other challenge videos, like where I attempted to beat the game with a U-Draw tablet, by clicking on the card right here. And on this high note, I think it's time to finally retire the Super Mario 64 challenge videos on the channel, at least until I come up with another crazy thing.